I decree of Richard Neville, the Earl of Warwick. In the year of our Lord, 1471, the army has been called to arms and the peasant levies called to assemble. For Edward of York has marched on London. He has taken the city and declared himself King of England. Now, by the name of God, we march to take back the capital. The House of Warwick rides with the House of Lancaster to defeat Edward and restore the true king, Henry VI, to the throne. Our army musters in Coventry, where thousands upon thousands of archers have joined our cause, and hundreds of noble knights are willing to do battle for the true king of England. But we have been told to prepare ourselves for a siege. For our plan is to besiege the walls of London and invade the city. But those walls are thick. So we have also been told to prepare that. One of the biggest, most powerful siege engines in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Warwick Castle Trebuchet! Woo! This is Ursa the Bear. She stands at 18 metres tall and weighs 22 tonnes. Not only is she one of the biggest, most powerful trebuchets in the world, she is state-in-the-art in trebuchet design. Look, we've got wheels on the side of her, which shows that we use manpower to load her. No longer do we need to use the age-old method of towing down the arm using a team of horses. We've borrowed the technology from medieval cranes, taking the wheels from the cranes and put them inside our machines. So the technology once used to build castles is now being used to smash them down. So how does it work? Well, the two wheels are joined with a central axle. A rope is tied to the throwing arm. The rope is led down to the A-frame at the back, then connected to the central axle. Then soldiers are ordered inside the wheels. We need four soldiers, two to each wheel. Their job is to simply walk inside those wheels, walking in this direction, turning those giant wheels around and turning the axle. In turn, pulls down the throwing arm and lifts up that box by winding the rope. And that counterweight box is the counterweight ballast, the source of our energy for our seed machine. And that counterweight box weighs one tonne when it's empty. What we've done is we've placed a further four and a half tonnes of rocks and rubble inside the box. So when you see soldiers walking in those wheels, that's four people lifting five and a half tonnes. Absolutely fantastic. This machine is a feat in medieval engineering. Now the arm is down and the trebuchet master has locked off the arm with the trigger system. We have a metal hook attached to the A-frame at the back. This has been passed through a loop on the throwing arm. This is our release mechanism, the trigger. Also, he's put on two safety implements. First of all, a firing pin is placed directly underneath the hook to lock it into place. Then a safety chain which is led from the base of the trebuchet then hooked to the end of the arm. These two safety devices ensure we do not shoot this machine before we are ready. Or as you can see behind me, the job of the winders is not over yet. They are ordered to split into two teams. One winder from each wheel will step out to operate a brake at the front, which leaves one remaining winder inside each wheel. Their job now is to walk on for a second time, this time in this direction. Now the reason why they have to get back in the wheels is because of that rope used to pull down the throwing arm and lift up that counterweight. That rope is now coiled around the central axle. If the trebuchet master was to pull the trigger with that rope tightly wrapped around the axle, this machine will be torn apart. The axle ripped from the heart of the machine, thrown out of the back and decapitating our trebuchet master at the back there. So the winders now have a very important job of walking off the slack, making sure that Ursa has a free-flying arm. But also they must watch to leave a small section of rope left on the axle so we can start the whole winding and loading process once more. When it comes to war, we need to be shooting this machine once every six minutes, which makes life inside the wheels extremely uncomfortable. When you're lifting the weight, you're walking in this direction. Not only do you have to walk around those wheels which weigh over a ton each you have to lift that incredible weight so you've got to stride high in the wheels really lift your knees it's like walking up an ever-increasing hill but when you're walking in this direction then there's no weight whatsoever this is where it can get very dangerous those wheels will have a ton of momentum driving themselves around you could lose yourself inside those wheels and go too fast then you could trip and fall 
You will then be tumbling around inside that wheel until it stops, most likely breaking your back. That is why we have those brake operators at the front. They communicate with each winder, making sure they keep a steady pace, but also making sure that they're not sick from trebuchet sickness. Now, trebuchet sickness is a form of motion sickness caused by those wheels. As they go round, the outer slats cause a flickering of light. So, if you do feel sick, you're going to throw up inside the wheel, and that's not a good idea to throw up in an environment when the floor becomes the ceiling over and over and over again. It's going to go everywhere. It's going to go on your clothes, in your hair, maybe a bit in your mouth as well. But more importantly, you could slip over. Remember, if you fall inside those wheels, you'll break your back. So, six minutes it takes us to wind this machine. So, that's quite slow. So why do we use trebuchets when we've got cannon that can do the same kind of job, but a lot faster? Well, cannons do create a breach in a city wall, exactly what we need for tomorrow in London. But once that breach is met, you then have to send in your own men, soldiers to fight for you in the streets and in the buildings. Now, with close quarter, medieval urban warfare, you have to be prepared to lose a lot of your men. Perhaps half of your soldiers won't survive. Ursa gives us another option, because not only with trebuchets can we launch projectiles at a city wall, but we can throw them over city walls to make life for the inhabitants a living hell. So what can we throw? We can throw anything. Rocks, fire, people, dead animals. Dead animal is a good choice if you want to fight a dirty war. We can infect their water supply by throwing in dead carcasses into the city, but also psychological warfare. Yorkists will see us building our machines around the city of London. We will have up to 60 siege machines, Ursa being the biggest. Taking two to three days to have them built and ready for war, the Yorkists are going to get nervous. They don't want a siege on their hands. So they will send out messengers to each crew to try and get us to agree to terms. But we are Lancastrian. We do not agree to Yorkist terms. So this is what you do to any messengers. Just grab hold of them and knock them out. Load them onto the trebuchet, but you've got to wait until they wake up. And as soon as they do, then pull that trigger and send them on the best ride back home into the city. And you'll know when they've landed, when they've stopped screaming. But the one thing medieval man was most frightened of was fire. And most of the internal structures of London were made of wood with thatched roofs, so we can launch fireballs from our trebuchet. If we can send fireball after fireball and create a raging inferno within the city, well then the Yorkists simply have a choice. They will surrender or they burn. But our plan for tomorrow is to breach those city walls. So we need to throw rocks, and that's what we're going to shoot for you today. We'll be launching an 18 kilo rock using slingshot. The core goes out stone loaded. The rock is placed in a sling bag permanently attached to the machine. It is placed in the center channel of the trebuchet. The bag is folded over so we get a decent release. Also, the top rope is let down and hooked to the pin at the end of the arm. At this stage, we are almost ready for launch, but we still have those safeties attached at the trigger. So the trebuchet master approaches the back to take off the chain. Then with a steady hand, he pulls out the firing pin. The trebuchet is now live and ready to launch. He steps off the machine to do his final safety checks to make sure all is well. Because this is 22 tons of whirling death, ladies and gentlemen. 22 tons. This can go wrong. And if it does go wrong, our trebuchet master will be killed for sure. So for safety, he puts on a tin hat. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good that's going to do. So now he'll step off the machine and take the rope which is attached to the trigger and take sole responsibility for the launching of the rock. Now this is war. We need this test to go right if we are to succeed tomorrow in London. So the trebuchet master needs your help. Let's give him a countdown from ten. So are you ready to count? Yeah! yeah. That was rubbish. Come on, you lot. This is war. Are you ready to count? Yeah! yeah. Then let's do it. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go. And we launch. Woo! Oh, look at that. Oh my God, that's amazing.
Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. the Warwick Castle Trebuchet! <laughs> now that is not achieved without an awful lot of hard work. So let's hear a massive round of applause for the Trebuchet Master and the crew! Yeah.